Now I'm going to do an example of uh, the pricing of a call option contract. So uh, let's assume we have a situation where there is one call contract on shares of Alphabet Incorporated. Google are trading with a with an exercise price of fourteen fifty and an expiry of three months is trading at a premium of sixty five dollars. So the exercise price basically means that uh, this is uh, if you are the holder you're going to be buying at that price and the three months is when it expires and the premium is the cost that you pay. Uh, the alphabet shares are uh, trading at $1,500 and you exercise the option. What's your profit and loss on the transaction? So let's uh, let's look at the the cost of the transaction and um, a couple of other things. So first of all, the premium is uh, $65. Okay, so therefore your cost is going to be 100 shares for each option contract times the premium of 65. So it's going to cost you $6,500 to buy uh, this one option contract. Now it says you exercise the contract and you um, uh, uh, and the shares were trading at $1,500. So what what would be your profit? And now if you bought the exercise the um, option you would be allowed to buy them at $1,450. Okay. And you are going to theoretically sell them on the marketplace at fifteen hundred. So therefore, the profit from exercising is equal to the fifteen hundred dollars that you're going to sell the shares for, minus the fourteen fifty, which is the exercise price. Okay, so this is your selling price. And this is the exercise price. And as a result, that's per share. And we're going to do this for 100 shares. So we will have 50 times 100 or $5,000. So therefore, your net profit on this whole transaction from buying and exercising is going to be uh, the profit from exercising, which is five thousand dollars okay, and that doesn't always happen okay you could have a situation where uh, the option expires and you don't exercise it because it doesn't make sense to do so minus your cost and so we just calculated that the profit was five thousand dollars and the cost was sixty five hundred so in this case the holder has a loss of fifteen hundred dollars on this whole transaction. And the important thing to remember is that this is a transaction between two parties. So the 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 writer, whoever sells the option, will have the exact opposite experience. Okay, so the writer uh, will have a gain of fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so it's a zero sum game. Whatever one loses, the other one um, uh, we'll, we'll make up. Okay, so the loss is for the holder. Okay, now one important concept to look at in this example that I did was uh, that these options are in the money. Okay, so if an option is in the money, that essentially means uh, that the share price, uh, actually I'll write here call option, the opposite is true for a put option. Uh, in the case of a call option, the share price must be greater than the exercise price. Okay, therefore, it makes sense to exercise this. Now, if you had a situation where the shares were trading at fourteen hundred dollars and the exercise price was fourteen fifty, then um, you would not exercise that option. You would not buy the shares at fourteen fifty when you can buy them at the marketplace for fourteen hundred dollars on their own. And so, in that case, you would lose money for sure because there's no profit from exercising, but there is a cost. Now, um, if you were to break down the premium of the option, it is going to be the um, intrinsic value. 
plus the time value. Okay, so the intrinsic value is going to be uh, it's going to be a situation only if an option is in the money. Okay, so this is going to be the the profit from exercising, and this will be on a per share basis. And this time value is a notional value. There's not a formula for it, but basically what it'll do is it'll calculate uh, uh, the value uh, left uh, on uh, or before expiration. So let's suppose the option was at 1450 for the call and shares are at 1450. Theoretically, in that case, there's no point in exercising, so there's no intrinsic value. But that doesn't mean the option is free. If there's still three months left on it, there's a possibility shares will go up, and and there'll be a uh, shareholders will be or uh, investors will be bidding for it, and whatever that works out to is is the is the time value. So in our example, we were told that sixty five dollars was the premium, and the intrinsic value I can calculate is going to be. $1,500, which is what the shares are trading at, minus $1,450, which is what you're going to be exercising from. Okay, so which is equal to uh, $50. So therefore, the time value in this case is $15. So essentially, people are trading or are willing to pay $15 more than the current exercise profit uh, because there's still time left and there's a possibility that that profit could uh, could increase even further.